Giovanna Provenza and today we're going to talk about problem set 2 camo case of CS50 introduction to programming with Python. So if you have any questions regardless of programming or about the career, schedule a free meeting with us, the link is in the description. And we would like to emphasize that this video solution is made for those who have already finished the assignment and want to have another view about the problem. We totally disencourage plagiarism, alright? So let's just start the problem in here. Basically, we're gonna create a file called camel.py where we're going to implement a program that prompts the user for the name of a variable in camel case. What is camel case? Is this case in here where we put two words together but the beginning of the next word is in capital, all right? The first letter is in the capital letter and outputs the corresponding name in snake case. And what is snake case? We separate the words using underscore, all right? Assume that the user's input will indeed be a camel case. So let's see here the example. We have here the first case. Let's see the second one. So we have here camel case. This is the input. The user will print we'll put first capital N name and we're going to output snake case, snake case and first underscore name. All right. I already did here a pseudocode for us. So basically we need to do these steps. We're going to get user input. Then we're going to print snake case. All right. Because we need to output this beginning of the, the output. Then we're going to look through every letter of our user input and we're going to check if the letter is in uppercase. If the letter is in uppercase, this means that this uh, this is another word, all right? So we have to separate here in another word using the underscore, and we're gonna do this. Otherwise, if it's not in capital, we're going to print the letter. And in the end, after doing all the loop, we're gonna print a space so we can go to the next line. Like we can see here, the dollar sign is in the next line, all right? So to start, let's understand how the input function works. Basically, the function input allows us to ask questions to the user and the answer that the user typed in we can store in a variable. For example, if we want to ask the name of the user, we can do username equals to input, what's your name? And it will be prompt in the terminal. The user can write his name. If the user types in Giovanna, the variable username will store Giovanna. Since the answer is stored in a variable, we can use this answer in our code. So now that we understood how the input function works, let's start creating our code here all right so i'm gonna make a variable called camel case okay and we're gonna use the input function all right what we're, what is the message we're gonna prompt in the input function we're gonna use here camel case and colon all right so we're gonna use him here camel case colon and let's try it out so if i do here camel and we do python camel.py it's going to prompt here camel case and I can put anything and nothing will happen. All right. Now let's start creating the output thing. So basically we're going to use here this snake underscore case. All right. And if we see here in the hints, how can we put everything in the same line? What we're going to write in the end. We're going to use this and equals to quotation mark. All right. Because this and equals to quotation mark will avoid the default case of a print that is going to the next line. Let's see how it works. So if I put here print snake case colon all right and then if i print the letter a let's do this trial so here we're going to output name all right and it's printing snake underscore case colon and a in another line right so to avoid going to another line we use this and argument here. We're going to use n equals to quotation mark and this will avoid us to go to the next line. All right. So let's try it out. If we try this again, I put name here and it's going to bring now name underscore case and the letter a after in the same line as the snake case. All right. So we're going to do this in here. Okay. Let me remove the print a, but we're going to use the snake underscore case. Now we have to loop through every letter to check uh, if it's upper or not. And then we can know where we're going to separate the word right so how can we do a loop in a string let's see how it works one way to iterate over a string is to use for item in string the variable item receives the character directly so you do not have to use the index for example if we have a variable s that holds the value bus and we want to print all the letters of the string each at a time we do s equals to bus for char in s 
print chart. The word letter can be replaced by any other word or letter you desire. The main idea is that this loop will give you every character at every iteration of the variable s. So like we can see in here, after this for loop, we're printing every letter in a different line. So now that we understood how the loop works, let's start implementing in our code, all right? So I'm going to do here a loop, all right? So I'm gonna do for, and I'm gonna use the word letter to be our interactive variable, all right? So for letter in, and what is the name of the string that we are storing the input is camel case. So I'm gonna use here camel case, all right? Right now, let's just print letter and we can see what this means, okay? So if we run here, for example, name, we're going to see snake underscore case and a m and e so we're printing in every interaction a different letter all right but this is not the goal of our code so i'm gonna remove here this print letter now what we have to do we need to check if the letter is uppercase and why is that because we know here that if it's uppercase this means that this is another word all right like we can see here first name we're gonna split in first underscore name here we have preferred first name so capital capital F and capital N and this is where we're gonna separate our words using underscores so that's why we need to find where is the upper case all right so before we start let's understand how if condition works Python if and else statements help coders control the flow of their programs an if and else Python statement evaluates whether an expression is true or false if a condition is true, the if statement executes. Otherwise, the else statement executes. Let's suppose we want to check if a number is greater than 10. The number we want to check is starting the variable x. We can check if this number is greater than 10 by doing if x operator greater and the number 10. If this condition is true, we're going to print numbers greater than 10 only. Otherwise, if the condition is false, we're going to have our else statement. In the else, we're going to print any condition satisfied. Let's see one example in the code above. Let's suppose that x stores the value 7. The if condition won't be true because 7 is not greater than 10. Then we will skip the if block and go to the else printing any condition satisfied. Let's do another example, making the variable x holding the value 15. In this case, the if condition will be true because 15 is greater than 10, and we will print numbers greater than 10 only. After that, we won't see the else condition because we already found our right condition. A Python elif statement checks for another condition if all preceding conditions are not met. They appear after a Python if statement and before for an else statement. You can use as many elif statements as you want. Now that we've learned elif, let's improve the previous code with an elif statement. Let's add one more condition where we want to check if the number is less than zero. In this case, we would write elif x, the operator less, and the number zero. If this condition is true, we will print negative numbers only. Let's see one example in the code above. Let's suppose that x stores the value minus 5. The if condition won't be true because minus 5 is not greater than 10. Then we will skip the if block and go to the elif block. Now we're going to check if this elif condition is true. Since minus 5 is less than 0, we will print negative numbers only. After that, we won't see the else condition because we already found our right condition. Let's do another example, making the variable x hold the value 5. In this case, the if condition won't be true because 5 is not greater than 10. Then we will skip the if block and go to the elif condition. Again, this elif condition won't be true because 5 is not less than 0. Then we will skip the elif block and go Go to the else condition. In this else, we're going to print any condition satisfied. So now that we understood how if and else condition work, let's start implementing in our code, all right? So we're gonna do if, okay, letter, and how can we check if it's uppercase or not? Here we have a method in Python that already already give this result for us, okay? So I highly recommend you to take a look at W3Schools. They have a really good documentation about Python and other languages that you want, all right? But let's see this case. So the isUpper method returns true if all the characters are in uppercase, otherwise we return false. Numbers, symbols, and spaces are not checked, only alphabet characters, all right? So let's see this example. 
Let's suppose we want to check if a variable x has characters in the uppercase. The variable x holds the value apple, all capital. If we do print x dot is upper, we would print true. Let's think of another example where x holds the value banana, all lowercase. If we do print x dot is upper, we would print false. So this is basically what we're gonna do in here, all right? We're gonna check if the letter is upper. So is upper, all right? We don't need to add any library in here. So if it's upper, this means that this function will return us true. So if is upper is true, we're going to print underscores and the letter in lowercase, all right? So we're gonna do exactly this. We're gonna print the underscore and the letter in lowercase. So how can we print the letter in lowercase? Let's see the lower method. Basically, if we have a variable x equals to hello, all capital, and we want to print this variable all in lowercase, we can do x dot lower parenthesis and the result will be hello, all lower. All right. So now that we understood how the lower method works, let's add this in here. So we're going to do dot lower. All right. And since we want to keep continue writing the same line as the snake underscore case, we're going to use comma and equals to quotation mark again. All right. So we're checking if the letter is in uppercase. Now, what if the letter is not in uppercase? So we're going to do here an else condition. Okay. And we're just going to print the letter. We're not going to do anything else. Okay. Letter. And remember to use the and equals to quotation mark. And finally, let's see what we have in here. I already put here in the pseudocode, but let's see this working. So if I put here Python camel.py and I put Giovanna Proença, that is my name, it's going to print Giovanna underscore Pro Proença. And then we're not going to the next line. So to avoid this and make everything perfect, let's do here a print without anything inside. And this already will go to the next line, okay? So let's do this again. If I do here, Giovanna Proença, now it's printing Giovanna underscore Proença, and then we're done with the code, all right? Now let's do check 50 to see if everything is working fine, and then we're done. So like we can see in here, we got everything green. So this means that we are correct, all right? This is it for Camel. If you enjoyed this content, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions, send here in the comment or schedule a free meeting with us, all right? I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.